My father um, was very good at um, using things more than once and uh, I guess it came from that generation of people and I uh, am not one to waste things so I tend to tinker quite a bit and uh, and the railway I guess is one way that I express myself. Um, the railway can teach you so much. It can, it can teach you electrical work, it can teach you engineering, it can teach you uh, landscaping, uh, you how to use your mind, how to, how to sort of develop different things. And of course, being a boiler maker by trade, um, I learned a lot of these things back then as well. And I've used a lot of those skills in my life too, I guess. I'm in the process of building this little factory. And of course that leads to the water treatment plant over here. The water runs down, goes through the tunnel, comes out and goes in this pipe. And there we are, we have our factory. And it's all held together with glue and um, the fields are made from coloured sawdust. Um, as an observer forms a great lot of these hills and mountains, glue, uh, paper mache, things from school that you learn. I shouldn't give all these little secrets away, should I really, but uh, that's what you do. Some other railway enthusiasts might get a benefit from it. Well, I started as an eight-year-old and I remember my very first scout camp trip was out to Police Creek, which back then was well and truly in the bush um, because the Gladstone High School was pretty well the bush in Gladstone. And we took an old cart out there with the food and stuff on and hauled it by hand out and uh, that started my scouting career uh, in the 5th Gladstone Scout Group. So uh, I stayed with scouting right through to Rovers uh, where I received the BP award. Uh, I went on to become a scout, assistant scout leader and scout leader at Urella Scouts and be, in that time we really built scouting up in Glasson. We went camping every fourth week. Come rain, hail or sunshine was never cancelled. We just went, they learned how to camp in that environment. They won awards like you wouldn't believe over and over and over and they were really good. And uh, I've always been grateful to my scouting career. I've lived by those rules of scouting in a, in a big sense, yep. Gilbert and Sullivan, eh? What a great couple they were. Um, of course, I was involved with the theatre myself as, uh, uh, with, as a member of the Gladstone Light Opera Society back in their early years and uh, I'd gone along to see their first production, Brigadoon, in what is now the Art Gallery, it was originally the, the Town Hall, and I was that impressed that I had to be involved in the next one and I got the job as stage manager. Well, that was quite challenging. Um, the old stage at, the, at what is now the Art Gallery was very small in the wings so all our furniture and scenes and props and what have you had to come up fr from the footpath up the wall through the window and onto stage and uh, at the time I had a, a small stage crew and of course back then we didn't have headsets or anything to coordinate so it was all done with rehearsal and everybody had to know their cue had to know the show, had to know when they had to move, and uh, had to know what they had to do in the time they had. Hey, 
money well as part of gloss we'd uh, purchased a building to rehearse in and uh, we inherited quite a big debt and so the word was put out to the members that they now had to raise this money one of the ways we went about it was to have a gambling night in the new theater the Gladstone City Theater as it was then we could do this by printing our own money and we could sell the the, uh, the guests who were coming in, they could buy that money with real money and then they could gamble. So it was a kind of an entertainment knife. So we raised substantial amounts of cash through that program and we also did um, theatre restaurants. Well, that was an interesting period of my life, I have to say. Are you any? Yeah, council. Yeah, I was involved with the council uh, for 10 years. Um, got elected in my first run and uh, had, uh, enjoyed the council very much. In fact, uh, Back in 2004, when I finally got voted out by the council, I attempted to get back in again several more times, including one period where I ran for mayor of the city. And uh, here's one of my uh, posters from the time, which um, people might recognize. Uh, I was even more handsome back then. And uh, we almost got into council. We missed by about 90 votes. like we've had a crash here. This reminds me of a time when I was younger when the local Church of England minister, one Donald Kinglake Dunn, used to come and run the railway and uh, he'd never go home until we'd crashed a couple of trains. He just loved running them into each other on a similar crossing to what we've got here. Anyway, one day I thought I'd do a really good job of it and I had some... Uh, Tripney bungers that left over from the fireworks. So I put these Tripney bungers underneath one of the overhead tracks, lit them up, and uh, blew up the track. Left a big dent in it. The trains went flying through the through the floor. It was quite interesting on the day, but I've managed to get past that now. I don't blow the trains up anymore. There we go. Here's another one off. I don't know. I think it's probably time for a cup of tea.